Have you ever felt trapped in a cycle of toxic relationships where the ties that bind you to them seem so unbreakable? If so, you're not alone. Tonight, we're going to unravel the complexities of trauma bonds and reclaiming your power. So get ready for a transformative journey unlike any other. Hey, beautiful souls. I'm Trauma Mindset Coach Natalie, CEO and founder of She's Taking Her Life Back and host of the Women's Work Talk Show. You know, as a certified trauma mindset coach, I'm here to guide you through breaking free from self-limiting beliefs, overcoming procrastination, and healing your trauma mindset that paves the way for healthy relationships and fulfilling goals. So welcome back to a Women's Worth Talk show. I'm thrilled to have you join us for the grand finale of our four-part series on Breaking Chains Trauma Bonding Recovery 101. Tonight, we're going to talk about some simple strategies for women who are bouncing back from trauma bond. You know, it's been an incredible journey. And tonight, we're wrapping it up with a bang as we delve into powerful strategies for reclaiming our power and rebuilding our lives. So if you're just tuning in or if you missed any of the previous episodes, I encourage you to catch up and watch the entire series. Each week has been packed with invaluable insights and actionable steps for healing and growth. But before we delve into the depths of this simple strategies for women bouncing back to trauma, I want you to take a moment to prepare yourself. So grab a pen, a paper, and pour yourself a comforting drink. Um, and, and whether that's water, because I got mine right here, or whatever you whatever you want to drink that causes you to feel comfortable during this next hour. Um, so I want you to from, from really fully immerse yourself in this discussion. So are you ready? Do you got that pen and paper? Do you got your drink ready? Did you grab a cozy spot? Come on, let's delve into this discussion by starting with some questions. And I'm going to put them on the screen so you can follow the questions along. And I would love for you to put it in the comment. You don't have to get too detailed for your answer. Sometimes you can just put, you know what, I agree, me too. Or you can share if you want to respond um, more in depthly to that. So whether you're watching the live or the replay, I want to hear from you. So let's start with this first question that I have, you know, um, I want you to answer the question and share with me, how are you feeling about the topic of tonight's discussion? When you hear the discussion about breaking chains and healing and bouncing back from trauma bonds, how does that feel for you? I want you to think about that now, and I want you to think about that as we go through this next hour. You know, what questions or insights do you have to share? Do you have any aha moments? Can you identify? Again, put them in the comment section. I want this to be an interactive, engaging conversation. Again, whether you're watching the live or the replay, you still can engage by putting your comment in the comment section. All right? Um, I want you to drop them. I want us to have this engaging conversation. So ladies, are you ready? Have you got your answer? Hold on, hold on. I'm looking in the comment section now. Ah, empowering. Thank you. Yes. That's what that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping. And if you're in on my Facebook, in my Facebook group, just know that in order for you to be seen um, by your face or your name, if you choose to, you got to go to StreamYard and click and give them access um, because this is a confidential uh, platform and you have to give permission for that. So yeah, I like that feeling empowering. That, that's how I felt when I first learned like, you know, there was an answer, there was a solution to me breaking away from those trauma bonds because I too experienced them. Um, but I'm here to share with you there's a way out and I truly believe in um, giving those steps. Um, I, I, you know, sometimes when I look at um, social media, whether, whether no matter what platform it is on, I hear a lot of people talking about this is what you need to do and you need to do this. I'm a firm believer, like you need to show me how. I need to see the steps. 
show me what to do. So here at a woman's work talk show, that's what we talked about. We give you the exact step, not a lot because we only have an hour, but we're going to give you some information. We're going to give you some steps to begin your journey. All right. So again, let, let's, let's, let's embark on this journey together. I want this to be a two-way conversation. So thank you, whoever made that comment. Thank you for engaging. Um, but let's talk about um, the first um, segment of our show. And our first segment of our show is going to be about understanding trauma bonds and reclaiming your power. So let's talk about that. I want you to first understand like about trauma bonds. Even though I talked about a lot over the last several weeks, I just want to talk real briefly and let you know that trauma bonds can be incredibly complex. It can be incredibly insidious. And what I mean by insidious, it can slowly creep in. And before you know it, you're in a relationship with someone who's trauma bonding you. You're connected to that person and you have difficulty breaking free. And I know that's difficult for some people to really like disclose or really to share because a lot of times there's a lot of shame attached to that. But there's times we find ourselves in a relationship with someone who trauma bonds us or we're connected to them for some reason um, because of our trauma bond. And I talked about exactly what that is. Um, but tonight I want to break down those bonds and equip you with practical strategies to claim your power. You know, trauma bonds are powerful emotions. They're connections that's formed with individuals who have caused us harm or manipulation. Again, I want to say that again because I love repeating myself when I'm when I'm educating someone because I want to make sure they don't miss it. A trauma bond is a powerful emotion. <coughs> excuse me. Mm. Oh, excuse me. It's a powerful motion <coughs> that connects us to individuals who cause us harm and manipulate us. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I also want you to know that these bonds are often rooted in intense emotions like fear and loyalty and attachment, making it an incredibly difficult to break free. <coughs> oh my God. Mm. Have you ever asked yourself or have you ever seen someone in a relationship and you recognize for them that, you know, they are not in a healthy relationship or you yourself say to yourself, I know this is not a healthy relationship, but somehow you find it difficult to break free. No matter how, no matter how many times when you go through the ups and downs with someone you're connected to, um, which is called a trauma bond. When they say, you know, how much they love you, then they turn around and then, you know, become emotionally unavailable and you still remain. That's a trauma bond. And then you challenge your own thinking and ask yourself, like, why am I here? Or tell yourself it's time to leave, but somehow you remain. Again, that is a trauma bond. And when you have a trauma bond, it is difficult to separate yourself. It's going to require you telling yourself or someone else telling you, you know what, you just need to leave. It's going to require more than that. And I know over the years that I've been a trauma mindset coach and even over the 30 some odd years I've been a professional counselor, I can't tell you how many times that people have told other people, just leave the relationship. Not understanding when you're talking about someone who has experienced trauma and I'm talking about the trauma of making you feel like you're not worthy. And there's a high chance most of the time it comes from your childhood. Right. And if you experience that kind of trauma and, and there are let me stop. There are different kinds of trauma. I'm not only talking about physical abuse. I'm not only talking about the traumas that, you know, kind of out there. I'm talking about even the subtle traumas of your childhood and how it can impact your life. Let, let me give an example with myself. And I, I share about my life openly because I want people to know that you are not alone. And I can identify with those experiences. And through my own healing journey and through my own training as a counselor, I want to share with you some real stuff. We're going to have some real talks on, the, on this talk show. We're going to continue to have real talks. So it, like myself, you know, I didn't grow up in a household where I was physically abused. That didn't happen for me, although that happened for many other people, although that did happen as I grew up as an adult, um, not in my original family of origin, but in my relationships, because majority of them were domestic violence relationships. Right. 
But in my childhood, although I did not experience physical abuse, what I did experience is emotional neglect and not intentionally. And that's because my parents, my father, so let's start with him. Uh, he was um, he was an alcoholic at the time. Didn't see a lot of that because my mother and him separated when I was around six years old. But what I did see in my father's inconsistency, he didn't show up for me like a father should show up. He would show up when the wind blew. So as a result of that happening in my life, it left me feeling like, you know, what about me? You know, am I not important? As a child, I didn't see like my father had his own issues going on. All I could see is that you forgot me. What about me? You know, and there was this mother, uh, my mother, although she, she did a wonderful job in raising me the best she could. Right. She had her own stuff going on. You know, and there was four of us in the household. And because I was the quiet one and, you know, I just like stayed to myself in the corner. I was the youngest one. It was kind of like, OK, I don't have to worry about her. That was one of the other issues. And another issue that I was left feeling like I wasn't important that I found out when my mother and I had this conversation um, in my um, probably and I was around 20. I want to say around 28, 29. I was able to have a conversation with her and ask her, like, what happened? Like, why didn't you pay attention to me? Why didn't I feel in, important? I had this conversation with my mother. And what she also explained to me, in addition to her being distracted from her own issues that left me feeling like I wasn't worthy, she also shared that I was a reminder of herself. And she did not like herself a lot growing up. Now, this is before my mother went into therapy and she was able to go to therapy. She was able to heal. And that's why we were able to have these real talk conversations. Right. So because of those two instances, I was left feeling like I didn't matter. That I wasn't important. I felt overlooked as a child. So having that experience in my childhood, it played out in my life because I kept getting connected in relationships and situations that reflected I wasn't worthy. So when I attached myself to relationships, guess what? Again, they left me feeling like I wasn't worthy. And I remained. I wasn't healthy enough to say, you know what, this relationship wasn't working out because there were signs in the beginning. And I talk about red flags. I talk about those signs in our other um, our lives. So if you haven't checked them out, go check them out. But I was connected to them. Even though they were signs, even though they, it was domestic violence involved in those relationships, um, I didn't have the ego strength enough to say, this is not working, I'm out. It took me years later in these relationships to say I'm finally out, right? But what connected me to them was called a trauma bond. They were a reminder of the childhood I had. Not every instances, but the same feeling that I felt in these trauma bonding relationships were the same feeling I experienced in my childhood growing up. Do you see that connection? So when we talk about like people, women, um, and I say women because that's what, who I speak to, but men experience it as well. But when you hear someone say, just leave the relationship and you're questioning why they're not leaving, because that, that connection, that trauma bonding relationship is very familiar. It is their normal. And if you if you followed me for a while and if you have and you're just beginning to follow me, I want you to understand you're going to hear me talk a lot about the subconscious mind. Right. For those who are new to that term, it's it, it, your subconscious mind is, is the thing that's playing back in the background. Like your conscious mind makes decisions. They say, OK, I, the next relationship I'm going to get into is going to be a healthy relationship. That is a statement that you're making out of your mouth and that you're consciously aware of what you're saying. But somehow you wind up in another toxic relationship. It's because no matter what you say out of your mouth, no matter what decision you say you're gonna make, it is the subconscious mind that's embedded in your, in your mind, in the background, is doing the choosing. It is your subconscious mind that holds the belief about yourself, no matter what you say consciously. Does that make a lot of sense? Um, put that in the chat. Let me know. Does that make sense? 
You know, it, it's it's because it holds your beliefs. So if you ever seen yourself like struggling, like I want a better relationship, I want to get out of this relationship, I want a better life, but can't seem to get there, is because your subconscious mind is still holding beliefs from your past. And that's the part that needs to be healed. And that's the reason why I became a trauma mindset coach, because even though we get out of these situations, we have to get our minds out of those situations. So if you're out of those situations, you got to ask, are you really out? I don't mean physically. Are you out in your mind? Are you still holding on to beliefs? Because if you don't change your way of thinking, if you don't heal some of that trauma through your mindset, there's a high chance of two things are going to happen. Well, three. One of them is that you may go right back into another unhealthy relationship. And the reason why we do that is because if we take the time, like people tell us, take that time between relationships, then we're left with us alone with our mindset that has not been healed. And then we start playing out who we are and why we got into these wrong relationships and a whole lot of negative self-talk and just a, just a loop of negativity. So uh, some people, like in order to get out of that, they just jump in another relationship to distract themselves from being with them. That's when we start going from one relationship to another, to another, to another, with no breaks in between or very short time between relationships because it's too unbearable to stay with us in our mindsets that holds the belief about who we were are based on what we were told and shown in our childhood. Make sense? Make sense? Just checking out one of the comments. Good. Thank you. Makes perfect. Thank you. Yes. You know, and, and, and the reason why I do a lot of education, because a lot of times people can't connect where they're stuck now. They can't connect like everything is happening, even though you're an adult. If you experience some, some, some form of trauma, it's a high chance that it's connected to somewhere in your childhood. It laid the groundwork for who we invite in our lives. It lays the groundwork for how high we soar in life, no matter what you say out of your mouth. No matter how many times, I'm gonna repeat it, you say the next man that I get involved with, he's gonna be different. This one is gonna be healthy. Then again, right back into another relationship with a toxic partner. Or either the, um, something else happens that would happen, sadly enough, there's women who say, I'm not getting in any relationship at all. I'm done. I am tired of being with unhealthy men. I'm done with relationship. It's over. I'm just going to be by myself for the rest of my life. That is a trauma response. And I get it because that response says, I'm going to make sure that I keep myself safe, that I protect myself from ever getting into another unhealthy relationship by not getting into a relationship at all. Again, that's a trauma response. And if you're watching and if you feel that you, I get it. I get it wanting to make ourselves feel safe. But what if there is a solution to that, that you can learn different ways to enable yourself to take small steps, small risks, and, and change your mindset to the possibility that may be some men out there who can create that safe space, who are not toxic. What about that? But there are some women, sadly enough, that don't believe that. And the reason why um, I suspect that they don't believe that is because they're looking at their past experiences. And because their past experience was filled with trauma bonds, they use that past experience and say, okay, now the rest of my life and the rest of the world and all these billion other men that I don't even know, they all of them are toxic. All of them are no good. They settle on that thought in their head. But I'm here to tell you, you can break free from that. You can break free from that. So let's move on. So thank you for whoever's commenting. Um, I can see another comment. Comment. I'm trying to pull myself out of that to be able to date again. It is scary. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, even though your face is not there, it doesn't have to be. I just wanted to put that comment up there. And the reason why I want to put that comment up there, you have no idea how many women felt that way and feel that way. You have no idea that I felt that way. 
but I was able to make some changes in my life. So now at, at this stage of my life, you know, I clearly know that there's no way that I may be able to prevent myself from running into someone who's toxic, right? Because um, when you talk about narcissistic people or men and men or it, women are narcissistic too, that's why I kind of struggle with that one. But we're talking about relationships with um, our partners. Um, when they're when they're narcissistic, or a lot of times even general, you know, people put their good um, foot forward when you first meet them. You see, you meet their representatives. You don't meet the real them. Um, and then what happens is we, we we say to ourselves, okay, maybe this one will be the right one. And then somehow insidiously, remember that word I use, insidiously, we slowly get into a relationship because this one seems like he's going to be the one. But what I'm here to tell you, we can't prevent that from happening a lot of times. But what we can do is we can begin to educate ourselves of the signs of unhealthy relationship, the signs of narcissistic relationships or partners. We can educate ourselves that. That's one thing. Education is just not enough. I just want to tell you that it's not enough. We also have to do some, uh, some healing of our trauma mindset. Because as you're healing your trauma mindset, what happens as a result is you start building up your self-esteem. And together, them together, being educated about, you know, what a narcissistic uh, tactic is. And I talked about on the last video what those tactics look like, those red flags. When you start seeing them, you have also grown enough inside of you that you say, now I am out. You know how to say I'm out. So as a result of that, I'm doing some of those things in my own life. If I see it coming, and I also got to be careful that I'm not leaving too 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 quickly. I had to learn that like years ago. Um, let me not wait for the first little thing to happen and say I'm out. Let's like, be careful. I have to see that there's a pattern, and I didn't do it by myself. I had support around me and I was able to bounce them off. Like, you know, I met this guy and these are the things that are happening. And I got some question marks in my head. Little antennas are going off. And then I run it behind. behind I run it by someone that I trust that has the ability to say, well, Natalie, let, let, just, let's give them a try. Maybe you're just being too overly cautious because of what happened in the past. So then I may wait another time. And then if another red flag shows up, we out. And as a result of me practicing that kind of thing, I began to feel safe. Because the reality is I can't change, I can't change people in the world, but I can change me. I can become secure in me and trust me enough that I know if it doesn't feel safe, it's time to leave. Is that making a little sense? And I know it's easier said than done, but trust me, with practice, and it all starts with building up our own self-esteem, right? With practice of doing that kind of thing, slowly but surely, honestly, like, um, and I'm living an example, you're going to want more in your life. You're not going to want what you used to want. So the struggle to leave a, a, a go or the struggle to say, you know, I'm out will become easier it'll become easier. Um, yes, and it takes work. It takes work, but it's possible. But again, um, I clearly understand, oh my God, this, the, the fear, the fear, particularly if you have been in a situation like myself, like I've been in cycles of domestic violence relationships. You know, it wasn't one, it wasn't two, it wasn't three, and it wasn't four. There were cycles of them. But I interrupted that pattern by doing the work of healing my trauma mindset. I did the work. And I can tell you this, and I've shared on the other videos. Anybody knows me, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. I have ran into some brothers that were fine, had good educations, were well off. And I said, I'm out. I'm out. Because I've learned to educate myself about what is a healthy relationship. What does that look like? What are the things that's supposed to occur like in the beginning of a relationship? So in the last video, I think it was my last one, I was sharing a little bit about that relationship and how he began to love bomb me, like telling me, you know, all these wonderful things. And we just connected like maybe a week or two ago. 
you, you should not be calling me boo. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't say like you, you're, you're the most wonderful woman. You know, I haven't met a woman like you in years. Those kinds of things. Like, it's not appropriate. Like, I just met you a week ago. You know, so again, check out that video. Um, I, I wanted to do this monthly series because I really wanted to take the time to educate women on how to break free from that scary place. From that scary place. And you're so right, whoever responded. It is scary. But it's possible to learn to take small steps and take risks. If you set up your life in a certain way, definitely beginning with changing and healing your trauma mindset. You know, we, we can find those healthy relationships. Right. So let me move on. I want to continue. And again, thank you for that response. You, oh, man, so many women um, um, definitely feel that way, including myself at one time. You know, um, I want to talk more about trauma bonding because, again, I believe in educating. Trauma bonds can manifest in various ways. Um, they can uh, manifest themselves in abusive romantic relationships to family members who are toxic and trauma bonding and even manipulative friends. Has anybody ever had like someone in your family uh, that was toxic, but somehow you were bonded to them? And most likely you were bonded to them because it's kind of like, uh, if I don't have them, who do I have? I'm alone. So I put up with, and I'm so conditioned and around family members that have been like that for years, that that kind of space is familiar to me. So to still be connected to a toxic family member, people are familiar with that and they become, you know, I hate to say comfortable because it's an uncomfortable situation, but they become conditioned to remain in that, even though the family members are unhealthy. You know, um, anybody had any friends that were like that? And then you remain connected to them because it's better than being alone. You ever thought about that? Better, better them than by myself. Better with someone else than being alone. You know, regardless of the relationship, you know, the trauma bond can be devastating. It leads you to feeling even more unworthy. It leads you to feeling even more helpless. It just leaves you feeling so much in despair. But I'm going to tell you, reclaiming your power involves recognizing the signs of manipulation. That's where it starts. Begin to recognize it. What is the signs? I shared in a video that even though I knew the signs, even though I knew that something was wrong in a relationship with one of my partners in years ago, when I when I first invited him to my house, and again, I shared in the video, I didn't invite a total stranger. Like I knew him, but we just connected, like um, decided that we were going to give this dating thing a try. Like early on, he was showing up in my house and walking around places he was not invited. I didn't take you on the tour. You taking yourself on a self tour. And then the next day showing up with things, things, showing up with things and money. And come on, I'm like, in my head, I was like, I knew something was wrong with that. Like, why is he giving me like several hundred dollars? Why are you coming with a TV? Because I just moved into my new place. Why did you come with a cell phone? And why did you come with all this stuff early on in our connection? Ladies, I'm here to tell you, being honest, being transparent. Like I said in my last video, I wish I would have said, you know what? You can keep that. It's not appropriate. Um, I think it's too early in our relationship for you to be doing things like that. I really wish I would have said it, but at that moment, I was taking it. I was taking it. I took it. And he was giving it, and I was taking it. And at that time, I was so broken before I met him. I was so, so broken. I felt so unworthy. And he was just showering me with things and taking me places and flowers and all of these wonderful things that I was like, I'm taking it. And I shared it last video and I'm sharing with you now. I paid the price for that at the end. I paid a price for it. So even though I saw the signs, even though I knew something was wrong. And at the time I couldn't connect and say, okay, this man is uh, uh, a manipulator. I couldn't connect that. I, but I sensed that this is not right. 
And then I talked about another relationship again that was so inappropriate. Um, and I don't mean inappropriate sexually. I'm talking about with words, bringing a stage of what should have been happening in a committed relationship, bringing that to the early dating experience. Inappropriate. Inappropriate. So when I see that now, I'm like, no, we ain't, we're not doing this. I don't care what you try to bring. We're not doing this. We're not doing this. Um, because being with someone who trauma bonds is devastating. There's highs and lows. There's love bombing. I love you, the best thing in the world. And all of a sudden, that switch clicks. And it's like they're not emotionally available to you, belittling you, putting you down, making you feel like you're, you're not important, gaslighting you, guilt tripping, tripping you. And then you're like, what in the world is going on? And then the next stage is the love bombing you again. That cycle is so frustrating. It makes you feel like, what is wrong with me? They're so strategic in making you feel like it is you all the problem. And then you get to the point where questioning like, am I the problem? And all of that, if you take some look at pieces of your relationships, if you ever <clears throat> just take, um, take a notebook, take a journey, and just kind of review your relationships in the past, you'll notice that they have a common theme. There may be some differences, but there's a common theme to probably how you felt in your childhood. Unworthiness, second guessing, saying to yourself, well, maybe it's me, maybe something wrong with me, and I did that one. Maybe there's something wrong with me. If mom and dad, didn't have time for me. The people that were supposed to love me, I must be unlovable. And that reflected in my relationships. Not only in my relationships, that impacted how high I saw in life. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I had a lot of successes in my professional counseling um, career over the last you know, th 32 years of it. And I just recently left it maybe a year ago. But in my counseling experience, believe me, I've gotten promotions. I've gotten promotions over people who didn't, <laughs> who had more condensals than I had. Um, but because of whatever gift that God gave me, you know, I was able to get promotions. But this is the but. It was a wonderful experience, but it wasn't based on what I thought was my purpose. It wasn't based on that. So as I was getting those promotions, as my salary was increasing, I still had a thought in my head like, this, what I'm doing right now, I'm fueling someone else's dream. This is not what I want to do. In my heart and hearts, for most of my life, I've always been connected to helping people. That's how I became a counselor. My mother was a psychotherapist. It just was a theme in my life. But I knew that I wanted to speak to women on a big level. I don't know where that came from, but all my life I wanted to speak. I wanted to educate. I wanted to uplift women who experience some of the things that I experienced. I always wanted to do that. So over the years, I finally got to the place where slowly, believe me, it didn't happen overnight, slowly began to move into what's my purpose. And that's why you see me here now as a CEO and founder, she's taken her life back. This is living in my purpose. This is why you see me now working on speaking. I have a speaking coach. Like th this is living a purpose. The, what you see me now is a first time author of a, that book, What About Me? Healing the soul, the hole in the soul of a daddy's daughter. All of this as a result of healing my trauma mindset allowed me to live from a place of purpose. Right? Um, Oh, so my, um, let me put this comment up so I can read it. What did you, this is so cool. Someone said, thank you. I haven't seen you since you had a small group before YouTube, maybe a year or two ago. God surely showed me this. Thank you, man. Oh, you are so welcome, Mandy. Oh my, wow, you've been around for a minute. Wow, you've been around for a minute. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of things behind the scene. Um, yeah, just get the message out. I've been doing a lot of things. And at the same time, Mandy, I tell people, regardless that I've been a professional counselor for 32 years, 
regardless, I am a woman in substance use recovery for 35 years. Regardless of those things, I can never forget that I'm a woman who experienced trauma. So all of the things that I'm doing behind the scenes to get to where I want to go, I'm still attending therapy as needed. And not for the same reasons that I attended in the past. But one of the things I teach people um, when it comes to coaching clients is that even when we talk about going to a good place, a wonderful place, an awesome place, a purpose-driven place, we can hit a brick wall. We hit brick wall, which is called self-sabotage, which is called procrastination, even when it comes to relationships. You know, we'll say, now I'm, I'll probably do a video on how I sabotage a relationship with a healthy man. So when I get to those points in my life, you know, my, my, my go-to when I see this pattern developing and it's developing for a little bit too long, I'll, I'll go into therapy. So um, I, I embrace therapy. I don't care how much experience I have. I am a woman who experienced trauma and that experience of trauma will never go away. I can't go back and un unchange that. So I clearly know because of my personal and professional experiences over the third, last 35 years that there are things that can happen in my future that I have not experienced yet can trigger some thoughts. And what are some of the thoughts that I found in speaking to women over these years and working on my own life is even when you go to a good place, what can be triggered is, I don't think I'm worthy to go there. Will they accept me? I'm not familiar with that world. And what we start doing is start procrastinating on goals. We start sabotaging. We don't start, we don't seek out healthy relationships. Um, we don't go to where, where they may be. We don't do the research of, you know, where would I go find a healthy man? Like, what do I look for? We don't do that um, when you're unhealed. But when you start healing your trauma mind, start, you start taking action. And action is not always fluid. Action is like, you know, we get stuck because your trauma mindset shows up, but we are around some support and we learn some tools that, you know what? We don't stay stuck for long. We keep it moving. We keep it moving, right? So let me share some more because I just have so much information. I love sharing um, information with women who had experience like me. You know, I just want you to know that in essence, reclaiming power is a journey of self-discovery. It's a journey of healing and it's a journey of empowerment. It's about breaking free from the chains of trauma and stepping into your authentic self with courage and resilience because you're going to need courage on this journey. That's why it's so important not to do this by yourself. Even if you tell yourself, you know what, the next health man is going to be healthy. Know that you have to be equipped with a support system, some new tools to cope with what's going to happen on the journey because it's not fluid. It's because you're going to hit bumps, bumps in the road. That Because you may run into that toxic person, you need a support to tell you that's toxic, man. <laughs> You may want to leave. They may they they need to help you go through the signs and tell you. Remember those signs you learned? Uh, it seems like this person exhibiting one, two, three, and four. You may need reminders because you may be so caught up in other things that feel good. You're not recognizing, uh, and this is the time to like leave. But you can do it. It's possible. You know, so tonight we're going to embark on continuing this journey. You know, I'm going to arm you with knowledge, support, and an unwavering belief that we are deserving of love, respect, and freedom. So buckle up, beautiful souls, because tonight we're going to continue the discussion because this is going to be a game changer. I'm hoping it's already a game changer. You know, it's time to reclaim your power and rewrite the story that you're holding in your trauma mindset, one empowering step at a time. Now, here's where I want to explore some practical strategies. I want to share a strategy with you. Hold on a second. I just want to put some of them on the screen. Here we go. Tools for rebuilding our 
lives. So I'm going to share with you three practical strategies to empower you on your journey. The first one is setting boundaries. You, if you follow me, you have heard me share over and over again. And I want you to know if you, if you ever hear me and I do share similar support, similar toxic, not toxic, similar tools, similar coping skills is because they work and they're so important. So this one is setting boundaries. I, I share like it. I've shared like when growing up or, you know, when I started like going out with guys when I was 16 and 17, I didn't even know what boundaries were. I was just going on with the relationship, letting them lead the relationship. Let, I didn't know what boundaries were. I didn't have my father in my life. Remember, he was inconsistent and he also was an alcoholic at that time until he went into recovery. He wasn't available to teach me what, how to operate with a man. What he demonstrated for me is a man who was inconsistent, a man who was an emotionally available, a man who was a womanizer. This is what I saw in my father when I saw him, right? So I didn't know what boundaries were. My mother, she didn't teach me boundaries. Remember, she had her own issues going on until she went through therapy. But I didn't know about what is boundaries? What's, what's that? So if you identify with that feeling, even at the age you are now, it is not too late to establish boundaries. And boundaries are the things that keep you safe. They structure your life. They tell you yourself and tell others, this is how I am to be treated. This is how you're going to treat yourself. People look at you and they they get a sense of who you are based on how you treat yourself. So this is a wonderful time to begin to set those boundaries. Set, set them. Decide what they're going to be for you. What are your boundaries? That's so important. So important. Another one you hear me talk about all the time. Self-care practices. And when I talk about self-care, I'm not just talking about getting into a bubble bath and getting face masks, although that's a wonderful thing. I love it, love it myself. But that's not all I'm talking about. You know, I'm talking about prioritizing your well-being in every aspect of your life, from nurturing your mental health to honoring your physical needs. Self-care is the cornerstone of resilience and growth. When I say resilient, resilience means it's that bounce back. That bounce back. Because again, we, we don't know who we're going to run to in this world, but we have to have the ability to take care of ourselves. So, you know, we taking care of ourselves. That gives us that bounce back because the more you take care of yourself, the more you build up your self-esteem and the more you say, we're not doing that anymore. Oh, we're, we're, no, no, we're, we're not doing him anymore. And when we see him coming, no, we're not doing that. That's based on you taking care of yourself mentally, physically, as well as those masks and, 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 um, and bubble baths and candles. Do that too, because I, I love them. The other thing that you always hear me talk about is seeking support. You know, I, <laughs> this has been like not only in my experience, but over the years of me helping my clients and sharing with them, you cannot do this by yourself. And the reason being is what I said early in this, in this, in this live, a conscious mind, the part that you are aware of, the part that makes the statements, this next relationship is gonna be healthy. I'm gonna make sure I see the signs in this next relationship. I'm not gonna go through what I went through before, right? That's your conscious mind talking. Remember I said, we also have a subconscious mind and a subconscious mind is the one that makes the decision no matter what you say consciously. Has that ever happened to you? Have you had made statements and said, this is going to be different. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. But somehow you revert back to those old patterns and you don't do it. And I know that's frustrating because I experienced it. I know that's frustrating. That's because it's your subconscious mind that's doing the choosing. And you need support around you of people who you trust, 
family members who are supportive because we have some, some people have some family members who are supportive, who understand. And when I, let me back up, when I mean by supportive, I mean, supportive in the way that the answer is not, I want better for yourself, so just leave him. They may be coming from a great place, but that does not really help because we ourselves know if we're in a relationship that's not good, even when we're in that relationship, we already know that we should be leaving. Correct, ladies? We already know, but the conscious mind is keeping us stuck there. Because that, that's what holds the beliefs about what we deserve. Right? Uh, uh, Mandy says, yes. Yes. It's important to understand you need some support. Um, one of the reasons why, again, I became a trauma mindset coach really is based on um, the 32 years that I've been counseling. And I specialize in addictions. I specialize in uh tra trauma recovery i specialize in even criminal thinking i specialize in anger management i specialize in some other therapies as well but throughout that you know journey i realized a lot of my clients experienced trauma in their past majority of them experienced trauma and even though they did well you know, and, and while they were inpatient treatment, even though they did so much, they did well. They all took all the notes. They was able to recite all the things. But when they left, and I'm talking about when I was the, the clinical director of inpatient treatment program long term, even though when they left, they had this knowledge in their head. Somehow they find themselves back into their old unhealthy patterns. Like, how did that happen? Like. How did after you learned all of this, got all this knowledge, is because they missed the biggest piece that I share with them. You cannot do it by yourself because our subconscious mind and our beliefs operate like they're on autopilot, right? You ever been in a car and, you know, and I know this happened to y'all, but I know it just ain't just happened to me. <laughs> like you're in a car and you're headed one way and all of a sudden you're back home and you're like, I how did I get back there? Your subconscious mind automatically went back to your house because your conscious mind was somewhere else. And you're like, how did I get back here? That's like the subconscious mind. Without you being aware, it makes a decision. You ever heard that thing? Like there could be a whole room of, of men, right? But we're going to pick the ones that way in the back, in the corner, that's toxic. How do we do that? Your subconscious mind. You need someone to help you um, begin to recognize those behaviors because a lot of times you're not going to see it because those behaviors fit like a glove. The behaviors of the someone you connect and do, they fit. They are your familiar. Your subconscious mind, subconscious mind connects to them. Like we fit no matter what you say out of your mouth. That's why it's important to, to heal the trauma mindset where it holds the belief about who you are. I don't care how many, what's, what's the same people say? I love me some me. The only way that you're going to convince me that you love you is by looking at the relationships in your life and looking at your life and seeing how high you're soaring. People who begin to really love themselves, they live from a place of passion and purpose. They take risks. They step out of their comfort zone because they want to get to that healthy relationship or they want to get to that healthy stage in life. So even though it's risky, they, they love themselves so much that they're willing to take the risk because if, if danger shows up, guess what? They know how to pull out. You can get there. Doesn't matter what you experienced in the past, you can get there. But you cannot do it by yourself. You cannot. It takes some time. It doesn't take years, but it takes some time for you to begin to operate with this new belief. It takes a little bit of time for you to begin to rewrite 
the story. When I mean rewrite, I don't mean just writing on a piece of paper what your life is going to be like. I'm talking about changing your way of thinking, changing that wrong narrative in your head and have it match this purpose-driven life. Change that narrative. So it speaks to your life. And when you look at your life, your life says that, oh, you love you some of you. You love you some of you because your life looks that, that way. You're not just saying it out of your mouth. It's not just a cliche that I can look at your life and see that you love you. It's not by your talk. It's by your walk. Making sense? So again, you know, seek support. Seek support. You know, join a support group, you know, come over to She's Taking a Life Back Learning Loud. You know, I just started going back about, about maybe several weeks ago. I mean, I began putting in a lot of um, exercises based on um, the conversation I put in there for the day, exercises, tips, um, things you can practice. So come over to the She's Taking a Life Back Learning Lounge. And if you're not already in the group, you know, if you look on the um, the homepage of this YouTube channel, there's a link there that you can click and request to join. Um, I'm all about empowering and helping women. Um, and stay tuned for things to come. We have a lot of things coming down on the line to help women um, take their life back. All right. So I also want you to know, and, 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 and this is another struggle with people. I want you to know it's okay to ask for help. It, there is strength in asking for help. It is not a weakness. I can't tell you how many times again I've heard people say, um, I don't need help. I could do it by myself. Because in their minds, they, they tell themselves or believe that asking for help is a sign of weakness. They tell themselves, I should be able to handle this myself. Not if you still have a belief system in your mind that you have not healed. And there's some people, and unfortunately, no matter how much, how many times they hit that brick wall, no matter how many times they get frustrated and struggle, will not ask for help. And rather suffer because of the belief system they have about asking for help. You need a listening ear. You need someone to help you navigate this new journey because if you have, or if you're used to toxic relationships, the world of healthy relationship is brand new for you. That's a world you haven't been experienced or haven't experienced it for long. So you need help in navigating this new world. You can't take yourself somewhere you have not been. If you some some of us, if we manage to get there, we want to not stay in there for long or running back to our old life for a sense of safety, no matter how toxic it is. No matter how unhealthy it is, we'll run back because that new life is intimidating. It doesn't feel familiar. It's too scary. It's too anxiety driven. So in order to relieve the anxiety, we run back to our familiar so we can feel like ah, I'm back home. But what does back home look like? Is back home look like I don't trust anybody? Never going to trust anybody? Don't believe I can have a healthy relationship? Or does back home look like here I go back in another toxic relationship? Something to think about. Okay. I have some questions. I'm keeping abreast of the time that I want to give you. So you can utilize it in your time of self-reflection. And my hope is that if you haven't um, done any self-reflection, is that you can begin utilizing self-reflection now. And what it really is, is taking time for yourself. And I do this actually every evening. You know, I take time and I reflect on the day. I reflect on my interactions with people. I reflect on what I said, what they said. Is anything that I said wrong? Do I need to forgive? Um, do I need to set boundaries with people? Do I need to say, you know what? We need to put a wall up here because you're not healthy for me. Um, I, I, I do that kind of thing. I also revert, I go back in my self-reflection time and say, okay, this brick wall I hit today, where does that come from? 
Is this a pattern that I'm continuing? Is this something I need to get healed? Do I need to seek help from someone who's equipped to help me, to help me through this? Oh. Mandy has another comment. One of the hardest things is finding a therapist counselor that knows I need healing. I have just started growing. It, it was the learning lounge. Oh, okay. Awesome. 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 Um, I hope that you're in it. One of the things that unfortunately that happened, well, it didn't affect the learning lounge. I was about to say my, my account on Facebook got hacked like twice. Go figure. But the learning lounge has always been in there. So if, if you're in there, Mandy, you know what? Follow us, join in and, and engage in the conversation. Um, I'm trying to get that group engaged and having conversation to support each other. Um, but yeah, hardest thing is finding a therapist counselor knows I, I need healing. Actually, but I, can, I, can I help you? It's okay for me to say this, Mandy, to you. Um, is it okay? So I'm not going to respond unless you say, yes, it's okay for me to say. Because um, one of the things that I, I'm also known for, um, Mandy, is saying things that help people, but sometimes I cause people to challenge themselves. So you said yes? Okay. So what I want to say to you, when you make the statement and you said, I, one of the hardest things, that statement right there is going to keep you having difficulty finding a therapist and counselor that knows you need healing. By making that, one of the hardest things. What you can do is reframe that statement. And what you can say is, as of yet, I haven't found someone that fits for me. However, I'm going to continue to explore and ask and, and seek around. And the reason why I'm saying that, Mandy, is because they're all good therapists and they're all good counselors. Again, because I keep things real and I've been counseling for a long time. At the same time, there aren't any, there are not aren't any, but there are counselors and their therapists who may not be a good fit. You're right. Right. So, and the reason why I know that a good, great therapist, because I have one, <laughs> I have a wonderful, great therapist um, who specializes in EMDR. And he's a, um, an EMDR is basically for people who experience trauma and he's just wonderful. Wonderful, 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 wonderful therapist. And but but you know what? You gotta kinda when they interview you, you gotta interview them and you gotta see if it's a good fit. And even after being with them for like a, a month, two months, 90 days, and you feel it doesn't work, find another therapist. Because I promise you, there are good therapists out there. There are. But again, you have to be able to be equipped yourself to say, I'm going to stay in the game. I'm going to stay on the search until I find that right one. Because what is the alternative? What is the alternative? Um, I got another user. I don't see a name on my face, but said EMDR saved my life. Yes. 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 EMDR for me was the therapeutic approach that turned the corner of my mindset. Um, I love this so much that I went out and I got certified as an e, um, EMDR. It is just awesome. It, 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 it is a game changer. And that was my experience and I see that was your experience. EMDR is amazing. Um, but if you're someone who had, or, or, or and there are people who are not comfortable with therapists, utilizing the trauma mindset coach can help you transform your mindset as well. But yes, whoever that was, yes. Um, Mandy says, I see, I need to continue to seek. So I'm gonna help you again since you gave me permission, Mandy. I want you to rephrase, I need to continue. Change that to, I will continue. I will. Will has a sense of uh, empowerment to that word, I will. Doesn't it sound more confident as opposed to I need? I say that because I'm a big, I'm a big, firmer believer what you speak out your mouth, you will have. And you will, Mandy, you will. It is a journey too, but you will run into that right therapist. Um, you can, I don't know if you've been to psychology.com. 
I'm going to put that link here. Um, you can, they have filters on there. If you haven't been there, Mandy, and you could put a filter in for a trauma therapist. And that's what I did. And that's how I found my therapist. Um, I'm typing right now, the link psychology.com. And again, even though I wholeheartedly and I love psychology.com, you know, when I had my um, counseling practice, you know, I, um, I put it on psychology.com, you still need to do the work in investigating, still invest. In that intake session or consultation session, have your questions ready for them. Ask them, do you have experience um, counseling women with trauma? Whatever question or whatever it is that you need, have your questions ready for them. As they're asking you questions, say, you know, I have a couple of questions myself. Can I ask you? Right? Um, yes, do that. Do that. And Mandy, you know, keep me updated. I would love to hear um, how, that, how that's going for you. Let me, um, I would love to hear that. Um, yes. Yeah. Oh, and you said, thank you. I appreciate you telling that. You are so Welcome, Manny. My heart and my passion is into helping women who experience trauma because I know, you know, if you've been in traumatic experiences like myself and I've been through child sexual assault, cycle of domestic violence relationship, grew up a dadless daughter, which left a hole in my soul. I've been through a lot of that connected to relationships that mimic that, you know. I want women to heal and, and, and I'm still healing. I would always be healing. Um, and again, I don't know when that trigger will show up. I want to be prepared with my coping skills and my support system. Um, yeah, just go, oh, just lost my train of thought, but yeah, yeah. Continue on this journey. It is possible. I think I was alluding to the fact that with all the experiences that I have and I'm able to get to this place. So can you, so can you, so can you, People would be shocked to know that as a child, I wouldn't speak much. I would have, you know, you know, kids, I think around my preteens, like they would come up to me, ask me, like, can you talk? And that was around certain kind of, of um, group of, 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 of people. When I was around my group, I can talk, I can say things. But when I was out of my comfort zone around people, I wouldn't talk. I would walk down the street with my head held down. I didn't say a lot. Here I am. I've spoken in front of front of hundreds and hundreds of people. If I can get there, if I can break through that, it's possible. And you know, I, I'm laughing to myself because I my mind tells me like you sound so commercialist because people say that. If I can do it, but it's, it's it's the truth. If I can do it, so can you. We deserve it. We if we've been through trauma, I think that we deserve it. We deserve to have the life that we deserve after all that we have been through in our past. We deserve this life. So go after it. Take your life back. Take your life back. I'm here to help you make that happen if you're interested. All right. So again, uh, let's go. And we gotta uh, end the show up a little past about an hour. Um, the questions I have for you. Right. I want you to think about this in your time of self-reflection. Um, and I want to see if I, I develop a banner for that. Did I put? OK, I didn't. OK. OK, so one of the questions I want you to ask, and if you got your pen and paper, remember I said come with your pen and paper and your water, which I need right now. If you can't write it down, review the replay and, and remember this question. Have you experienced a situation where someone's affection felt overwhelming or suffocating rather than comforting? Remember I said earlier in this um, live that I experienced someone who loved by me. I talked about it in the last live. Uh, like early in a relationship, you know, you're, you, you're the woman I've been looking for in my life. Um, you're special. You're different. You know, I had the verbal suffocating. Then I had the, the man that brought all the things, buy me things too early in the relationship. And after a while, it did become suffocating. After a while, have you ever experienced that? That it made you feel a little bit uncomfortable, like something's not right with this. 
How did that make you feel? And how did you respond? I want to give you examples. I want you to pitch a scenario where a family or friend always seems to make you doubt yourself or your decisions. I want you to think about that. Has anybody ever made you doubt yourself or doubt your decisions? They may dismiss your feelings or gaslight you into thinking you are overreacting. Have you ever heard that? You know, relationship and with who's a family member or, or intimate partner, like they're telling you like you are just overreacting. You always do this. Here you go again. You ever heard those things? That's gaslighting you, making you feel like you overreacting. And you start second guessing yourself. Like, am I doing this? You know, recognizing those behaviors is the first step into breaking free from manipulation. Here is where I want to interject where a support system will be so beneficial to you, right? So if you have a partner who does those things or a family member that does those things, it would be great to run run behind your, excuse me, run behind. It would be good to run it with your support system. Like this person that says that I'm overreacting or this person says that, you know, um, I'm this, I'm overthinking, I'm doing too much. What do you think? Share that with them the situation, ask them what do they think and ask someone else. That's where the support system comes in for some of you to bounce some things off of, right? The other question is, have you encountered someone who made you feel like your doubt, even your own reality. Like you start thinking like, 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 are they right? Maybe it is me. Maybe I need to check myself out. Maybe I'm the one that's causing all these problems. Maybe I am overreacting. And sometimes you start to believe it and then you start behaving in a way that you're going to make sure that you're not overreacting to the point where you don't even advocate for yourself anymore. It's like, I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to overreact. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand up for myself. I'm not going to set those boundaries. How did you handle that situation when you were made to feel like, you know, your reality wasn't the way you see things is not correct. It's not rational. How did you handle that? And what strategies did you use to reaffirm your confidence and boundaries if you were able to? Did you were you were you able to say stay strong in your boundaries and say, no, I'm not overreacting. This is what I need to say to you. You know, I also want you to consider a time where you felt pressured to agree to something you are not comfortable with but you did not want to disappoint or upset the other person. You know, learning to assertively communicate your boundaries is crucial in resisting manipulation and reclaiming your power. It is crucial. Can you recall a situation where you felt pressured to do something against your will? How did you navigate that conversation? What strategies did you use in the future to assert, could you use, I'm sorry, which strategies could you use in the future to assert your boundaries more effectively? This is our, uh, our next segment, the tools I want you to begin using. for you to get using, to amplify your journey. When I say amplify your journey, I mean to, you know, increase your participation, decrease, increase your action steps on this journey. One of the wonderful things, and you've heard about it, is journaling. Journaling is like holding up a mirror to your soul. It allows you to process your thoughts and emotions and gain clarity. And it also helps you track your progress over time. If you're beginning this journey and this is new for you and you're doing, you want to do things that are new, get your journal and start writing out the things that you're doing. How are you now responding to things? 
your journal is where you can answer those questions that I just posed to you. And it's a safe place to express yourself freely without judgment. So when you're made to feel like, you know what, maybe something's wrong with you, you're questioning your reality, process those thoughts inside of a journal. Write it down. There's something about putting pen to paper and being able to review it as opposed to just reviewing it in your mind. You'll get more clarity when it's on paper. And as you journal, and as you journal, as times go by, if you review your journal, you're going to be, begin to see patterns of behavior. You also will recognize when you're making progress. When you doubt yourself, your journal would say, you know what? This response was empowering. I stood up for myself the first time. You know, all those positive things you're implementing, write it in your journey as a reminder of you're doing good. You're making progress. This is about progress, not perfection. You know, applaud yourself. Your journal is a reminder. It's, it's a feedback, so to speak, that yes, you are making progress. Again, and it's a safe place. The other tool is mindful. Oh, excuse me. Is mindfulness and meditation. Oh, this, this is a big one for me. Mindful and meditation are powerful tools to cultivate inner peace and resilience. So when we talk about self-reflection, you know, for me, meditation puts you into that space. It puts you in the space and it helps you practice clearing out the clutter. The clutter of what's going on in your house, the clutter of what's going on in your day, or your thoughts about what happened at work, what happened at the store, what happened, you know, it helps you get to that place of peaceful place. And by tuning in to the present moment and practicing self-compassion, you can develop a sense of calm amongst your storms. And when you're in that state of calmness and peacefulness, that's when you begin to know who you are. That is a wonderful place to begin to cult cultivate your authentic self. That's the place where you can start thinking about, you know what, this is what I want for my life. This is what I no longer want for my life. In that time, you can practice different statements you're going to say the next time someone tries to gaslight you or someone tries to guilt trip you. This is a wonderful time to think with clarity, what am I going to say? What is that next statement I'm going to make the next time that happens? There's so many things that you can do in this place of mindfulness during meditation. This is when you, again, can renew yourself, become your authentic self, build your self-worth, actually become learning to have a world outside of everyone else. Learn to love you. Learn to spend time with you. I love spending time with me. I love having self-reflection because it gives me clarity. Um, I love journaling. I love writing. It gives me a sense of getting to know me because prior to me doing that, my focus is on everything that was going on inside of me, everything that was going on in the family, at work and, you know, the neighbor. I mean, my mind was everywhere else but me. This gives me a time for me. So when we talk about me time. This is this is me time. This is a wonderful thing to begin to cultivate. And, and you know, one of the things that I learned as a result of doing this over the years, I have learned to the I've gotten to the point where things can be happening like in the next room. I'm able to like tune that out. I'm able to tune what's going on outside of me because I'm so focused on the inner me and how I learned to tune things out and create this peaceful place for myself, no matter what's going on around me. It can be done. You know, by tuning into the present moment and practicing self-compassion, you develop a sense of calm amidst life's storm. Another one is personal, whoops, excuse me, some water, personal growth resources. Uh, this one, whether it's books, podcasts, or online courses, or personal growth, resources are so invaluable. I have this. Oh, my God. I have so many books that I've acquired over the years. 
whether it's based on my you know professional training, my own journey of transformation, my own journey of healing, my own journey of recovery. I have acquired so many books. I can tell you probably 99.9% of my books are based on healing, self-help. Um, I go and utilize other resources, you know, podcasts. I take courses. I'm forever a student. I want to make sure I equip myself and be prepared to allow myself to grow. I want to prepare myself for what's next in my life. Whatever that place is, and I'm clearly know what that place is, but whatever that place is for you, you want to prepare yourself by learning the more you can about yourself, your mind self, where you're going, how they think, how can you align your goals there? How can you align your mindset to where you're going? Getting resources like books, podcasts, online courses, coaching, learning lounge. Um, those are places that can help build up your resources and therefore build up your personal growth. So seek out those materials that resonate with your experiences and goals and allow yourself to be inspired and empowered. There's some resources that I have attached to uh, several of our lives. They're workbooks that um, I put on for sale. But if you go onto the earlier lives, I have, have links there for free workbooks. But then there's that I put more work in, more in depth with that I help you on this journey that's for sale. So go check out that YouTube video. Look in the description and cl click the link for the workbooks. They are awesome. They're going to help you set boundaries. They're going to help you. How do I develop support? What does support look like? Who do I ask? How do I make that happen? I don't know anybody. So where do I start? And they'll help you answer those questions. They'll help you practice those things. You know, so I want to encourage you to utilize this tool. Do not go with this on your own, you know, and it's time to hear from you. And I'm so glad to hear from Mandy. Thank you for engaging on this live, Mandy. Um, I always say, you know, it's a squeaky wheel that gets the grease. You know, I'm always that one to say, you know, I have a question. I have a question. So if you haven't asked the question or if you haven't made a statement on this live, go to the comments section be checking them out. So we're airing on in our Facebook group, The Learning Lounge, and we're also on YouTube. So wherever you're at, you know what? Comments. I'm going to check them out. Ask the questions. It's time to hear from you. You are amazing viewers. If you're viewing this, I know that you're somebody that wants to change your life. That That's a given. Nobody spends the time, whether you spend five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes on this live or the replay, you've already told me that you're interested in making changes in your life. So I want to hear from you. How did you feel about tonight's discussion? Any insights? These are questions I asked you early on. Any insights? Any aha moments? Again, drop them in the comments. So as we come to a close, Oh, I just want to thank you for those who've been on this journey with us for our four-part series. Um, thank you. I want to express my deepest gratitude to each and every one of you for joining us on this journey. And if you haven't yet um, reviewed the last three weeks, because it's been a four-part series on trauma bonding, go check it out. Go check them out on our YouTube channel. All right? And remember, healing is not linear. No one's healing is like this. No one. Growth takes time. Be gentle with yourself in the process. Trust the process and know that you are worthy of love and respect and empowerment. So take your light back. Have a good evening, and I will see you next Wednesday on a Woman Worth Talk. So in the meantime, click and join the lounge. And if you're in the lounge viewing this, let's engage in conversations. Let's engage in that conversation. Let's talk about it in our group. It's a private place that women like you are there. Um, we experience those issues. You know, come out and join the conversation. Let's learn. Let's, let's learn. Let's, let's talk to each other. Let's take time there for personal growth. I will see you next week. You have a good evening.